Welcome Spartans to Mission Debrief. We're playing every mission of the mainline Halo video game series in chronological order, discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a little lore along the way. If you'd like to, pl- to play along and have your thoughts read on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. We'll be playing the Halo mission from Halo Combat Evolved on the next episode. This episode... We're debriefing the Pillar of Autumn from Halo Combat Evolved. I'm your yes! I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. I freaking love this game. <laughs> and No cursing. And Krista <laughs> Brown. Greetings. Um, so we're, we made it. It's weird because we did, if you've been following along, we played Halo Reach first, which in, is, is in chronological order, the first game. Um, but it's the like fifth or sixth release of halo so it's fun to kind of come back now at the beginning where where it all started um we'll be playing the anniversary version of the game um actually because we'll be playing on a halo master chief collection you can actually kind of flip back and forth on the graphics if you want to go back and see that sort of stuff um but we'll be focusing on the the anniversary treatment um but we wanted to give you a quick run through on um, just kind of the overview of the game. Um, so Chris is going to give you some some highlights before we start diving into the mission. All right. So the developer is the late and great Bungie. Uh, the original release was November 15th, 2001. Uh, the remake Damn. master was 10 years later, November 15th, 2011. Exactly. I love years. how I love how they did that. Mm-hmm. That gave me chills when they were like announcing that. I'm like, ooh. But um, there are only 10 missions in this game, which makes it one of the shorter Halo games. Uh, Other games released in the same year was Grand Theft Auto 3, Silent Hill 2, Final Fantasy X, Metal Gear Solid 3, Super Smash Bros. on GameCube. Metal Gear Solid 2, sorry. Oh, sorry. 2. Oh, wow. Uh, Max Payne and Advance Wars. I like making this list. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, there's a lot of good games that are coming out about this time. It's a good year. And... The Metacritic score on this game is only a 97. I think those three <laughs> points were taken off just for the library level. Probably. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's where the points were taken off. This is off. probably the highest rated game, Halo game. It's crazy to see that 97. And uh, us as a team, uh, we're playing the Anniversary Edition on the Halo Master Chief Collection. Some of us are playing it on normal. Some of us are going a little harder difficulty. Uh, just play on whatever difficulty you want. It won't really affect uh, what we're talking about here. We're I, mostly talking about story elements and gameplay. I actually did the, or I'm going to try to do the playlist on Halo Master Chief Ooh. Collection, like the, the Master Chief Saga, I think is what it's called. So we'll see oh, so you works. go through every oh, single oh, wow. one? Yeah. I've done that before. It's, it's, it's good. It's fun. But, it's, but you can only play it on normal or legendary, so I'm doing it on normal. See what happens. Oh, yeah. Boo. <laughs> but um, the Halo timeline covered, or the uh, the dates t- covered in this game, are September 19th, 2552, to, to September 22nd, 2552. So just, just a couple of days. We're just going over just two or three days. It's fine. I wonder what the bullet per day count is <laughs> in this game because we throw a lot of bullets out there in these couple of days whereas in halo reach like we had a, like a month like over a month um to play that entire game but this one's just a nice little compact compact you're gonna have to start counting i will it's fast pace <laughs> one bullet <laughs> two, two bullets, bullets. Okay, divide three that by. bullets <laughs> um well the other thing i wanted to mention is that halo combat evolved is in the video game hall of fame Oh, yeah. Which is pretty cool. I think it was the second or third class in the Video Game Hall of Fame. It's up there with, you know, Pong and I think Pac-Man's in there. and you know. All I remember the... voting for it yeah. when they put it out to the public vote. Mm-hmm. And um, you can go find, I did watch, um, um, well, I keep forgetting Frankie's last name. Frankie O'Connor. O'Connor. Um, he, he actually did the, um, he accepted the, the um, award, award and kind of gave a little speech, which is kind of cool to say. Or cool to see. So, yeah. Go check that out if you haven't seen it. Let's dive in. So, the first mission of the first Halo game. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's just like once that cutscene starts starts loading up, it's just like, there's just weird euphoria that happens. It's like, oh, my God. So, let me give just a quick, I'll give you a quick, my quick little synopsis, and then we can kind of dive into the, to that um, opening cutscene. So, 
Um, the Pillar of Autumn drops out of slip space near a mysterious ring world. Um, after a brief introductions of Captain Keys, Cortana, and Sergeant Avery Johnson, we step mm-hmm. into the armor of Spartan Two Petty Officer Master Chief John One One Seven. With the Covenant boarding the ship, we race to the bridge um, to to jack Cortana into our helmet, grab a pistol from Keys, and start mowing down aliens. We fire countless rounds of bullets and paint purple alien blood all over the sinking ship before finally reaching an escape pod and heading down onto the halo. As Krista just said recently, um, the date is September 19th, 2552. I didn't do the math. Oh, somebody did the math here. 20, I did the 20 math. days. So we were in slip space for 20 days before we popped out. Um, and we kind of talked about slip space in, in one of the previous um, episodes. So have a look. Either look that up or, or listen to I think we were talking about it in... Um, when the George mission with, um, yeah. with Aaron, we talked a little about slip space, but it's a weird thing. It's kind of wormholeish thing. So the time does pass, um, and they did like the cryo kind of makes sense for for Chief because they they weren't necessarily sure where they were going, but twenty days have, have elapsed. All right, so now let's dive into that opening cutscene. I got chills. How do you guys feel about it? Oh, always, always, yes. every single time. I loved that we get to see this cutscene again right after playing Reach, where it ends on that mm-hmm. cutscene. I think that's such a lovely kind of tie-in, yeah. and how the games how the games overlap there. I love the so foresight think- that goes into it. Like you know, the writing Joseph Staten um, was is famously one of the, the lead writers for Bungie at the time, and they did a good job of like kind of setting up a potential prequel because the conversation is just you know something happened and now we're here. So I think they they kind of left that open, which is a which is a cool. Mechanic. Well, I want to say at at this time, I'm sure that the Fall of Reach book was in some kind of pre production. So sure. I'm sure they knew what was happening and that this is just right. And I I want to say that like the back of the box had some of that detail on it mm-hmm. in terms of like you're the last Spartan or something along the lines of your planet yeah, just being destroyed and you're on the wrong. Yeah, it did you're the last. You're the last. It said you're the last something, but it, at yeah, the same yeah. time, you're not. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, you have to take a couple things with a grain of salt in this. Now, you're the last active one currently on the ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, they're, you know, they're building something over time, so it's, it's hard to go back and redo that when they didn't know where oh, it was yeah, going to go, understand. right? I mean, they're building this cool yeah, world, and they're realizing, hey, you know, people like this. Let's do some more of that. So. Well, and also, the original Halo was in development for a really long time mm-hmm. because it was not originally supposed to come with the Xbox. That's right. It wasn't originally supposed to be a first-person shooter either. No, yeah. it was a real-time strategy game yeah. on the Mac. That's nuts. It's crazy. Crazy. And that's kind of well-documented at this stage. It's various videos and f- cool kind of things you can see and what the game was originally supposed to be. You can actually before, see um, the original uh, conference that they had at one of right. the Mac World like, uh, conferences where they were and showing off Halo. Bill Gates came in and swooped it away. And it was great. <laughs> and Master Chief had a weird antenna. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, like, yeah a weird that? backpack. I do, <laughs> yeah, I remember Weird backpack like be- antenna. So let's unpack this um, opening cutscene a little bit. Um, they talk about um, reach and, and the jump that they, the blind jump, quote unquote blind jump. But now we know because we played the first game that it wasn't a blind jump. Uh, we played Halo Reach, excuse me. And um, you know we start to meet some of the characters. They have a brief conversation, Cortana and Keys, and then um, they talk about opening. Or what do they they say? What's the exact phrasing for for getting hushed casket? Yeah, the hushed casket. Open the hu- which I look. Which I actually, when I was reading in to kind of some of the trivia about this game, that's with reference to a poem called John. No, sorry, a sonnet by John Keats called oh. "To Sleep." Is where the phrase "unseal the hushed casket" comes from. That's cool. I don't know what the significance of that sonnet is to, but someone on Bungie must have cared enough. Yeah, yeah and exactly. that's where that came from. And so does it go right to Chief, or does it go to, to Johnson first and then go to Chief? It remember? goes to Johnson first, because okay. everybody's, uh, he says everybody go to combat stations and everybody starts suiting up. That's right. Uh, fun thing about, fun thing about the, uh, Johnson dialogue is that it changes with, um... The difficulty? With what yeah, difficulty. that's right. So, uh... That's such David, a random thing. I remember back then thinking, this is, this is crazy, this is so weird. It's something that wasn't really common in video games at the time, having different dialogue for different difficulties and stuff like that. People just didn't think about that. But um, David and I were playing on Legendary. Uh, and, you uh, were? Yeah, <laughs> we were playing on Legendary. And uh, 
we were laughing really hard because uh, Johnson called the Halo a uh, I don't care if it's a son of a an anti son of a bitch machine or yes. a giant hula hoop. It was like oh my god. Yeah, there's some excellent like his. His I love how, for, for, <laughs> but his dialogue gets more aggressive and more abusive with the higher the difficulty you go, <laughs> and it's it's pretty funny just seeing the ramp up in intensity, and um, it's it's great though. And if you recognize that personality, they kind of stole it from the movie Aliens. Um, yeah, big a, time. There's a hey, um, I forget if he's a drill sergeant or what what the character is, but he's essentially in that movie his is a very n- name similar, is Apon, I think. Well, from aliens yeah yep and he's um he's just as a very loud boisterous doesn't give a crap about anybody <laughs> um very kind of stereotypical in terms of you know hoorah a sergeant a sergeant yeah. right. hoorah um Ray marine yeah but I, I mean we all we all love johnson so we'll talk more about him as we go um so the, yeah we then what do we do we open the hush casket and did the tutorial feel really slow to you guys because we've or, i mean we've already felt this we've already played the halo reach well we got to um it doesn't trigger the tutorial when you're in heroic oh, or it's not yeah, that, yeah. that's actually it, what felt different because i normally played on heroic mm. and i'm like why is this feel so weird and it takes forever like i have to you have to like go over look at and, all the like, buttons look up and down and then it tries it inverts it and like i don't want and then you're like oh, i don't know how to get to the thing <laughs> exactly but another thing that was really important about that first cutscene, just going back for a second, is that they drop like the coal protocol and stuff like that. Mm. All of this oh, yeah. stuff that yeah. you have no idea what it is. You're like, I have no clue what these people mm-hmm. are talking about. All this about. jargon, yeah. all the. But it, I think that cutscene, for as short as it is, just set up a whole lot of questions and even does a really good job of setting up the universe being much wider mm-hmm. than what's going on in this game. And like, like you said, Chris, the coal protocol, what spins out to that? from reach where they came from from the ai to the random jump that's not a random jump to the spartans what they are and the different kind of hierarchies the different ships i mean there's tons going on it just also in that one little short it really also really highlights you know where humanity stands between the covenant we're obviously really scared because we're doing all these protocols and stuff because they've entered the ship mm-hmm so it's pretty obvious back, that we're not doing foot. very well well the other thing too is that it says that how did they get here before us um, yeah. You know, but so again, slip space is a weird thing. But the Covenant, their technology is is further advanced, and they can travel through sp- slip space better, more efficiently than the UNSC right now. So they, or Covenant were already there. Well, mm. oh, yeah. Is that conspiracy theory style right there? I don't think that's I it. Think that's I think actually... isn't it just they didn't just are faster than us, so they could they knew where we were going, so they got there before us, kind of thing. I thought, the covenant, I thought the Covenant knew where the Halo was and were going to look at it. I didn't... Uh, I don't know. Because they got I it off need of an back. artifact or something. We'll have to look Wasn't at that it. in the book, in the Halo Reach? Isn't that what that artifact was? And where Cr- Cortana pulled those, that data? Do you remember they yeah, intercepted that she, in the book or something? Yeah, it, that's that why she knew where the Halo okay. was. Because the so Covenant guess, were sending important coordinates. And she's like, I wonder what this is. Mm. Yeah, I say technically they knew where it was. But I, I don't think the time between um, them learning where it was and then us getting there in the first game was much. Like maybe a few hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There, there isn't a whole lot of time difference between the Covenant getting there for humanity and us but anyway Keith Cortana says they were waiting for us on the other side of the planet so like they were they knew we were coming mm-hmm. at that stage yeah um so then we so yeah so I go through my tutorial because I'm playing a normal and if you did you, you're doing the same thing um but you do get to see that our engineers our super friendly engineers just get murdered right away right you see that on everything <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay um and it's it, it's an interesting Opening, and I think a lot of games are kind of playing around, you know, with this period of time, playing around with with how to enter, how to um, kind of throw the player into the action. But you're thrown into the action. You see this, you're this giant badass robo guy, um, and then, you, but you don't have a gun, so you just have to run through the mission. Um, can you even smack those guys? I think I tried to. Um, no, you no. can't. Yeah. You, can't you can't even melee. Nothing. You just have to run to the bridge. So you have to kind of. And all those enemies are invincible as well. Already. Oh, they are. There's, there's, okay. Yeah, there is there is nothing you can do. Okay. You can't pick up any weapons from dead enemies or dead allies. You just gotta run. Because there's the one door that opens, and there's a, there's an elite right in front of you, and he screams at you, and you're like, ah, you just have to kind of run by him, I guess. Or he kind of backs off. I think he backs off as your marines are, are shooting at him. But um, make our way to the bridge and have a little chat with Keys and Cortana. Cortana, like I forgot how sassy she was. It's been a little oh, while since I played so the, sassy. the missions. Or, um, yeah, the campaigns for Halo, but she is super sassy. 
Um, <laughs> and I think I do remember them saying how she originally had a, Brit- a British accent or she was meant to be have a British accent somewhere along the lines, like when they were writing the original script. And that's why some of the things that she says are more kind of of a Britain um, dialect or... or I never um, noticed that, but I guess it's because of where, where I'm from. You did notice that? I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, she says. A, I don't a really few ever notice that here and there. I don't think any of this er- initial dialogue. But she says some. She says something about a cudgel at some point, which isn't really like an American term at all. And there's a couple other things here and there. So, anyway, um, so we pull her out. So she's now kind of this little. Actually, the chip is bigger than what I remember too, because we're used to the to for the future games where it's the chip is a little smaller. But you kind of pull out the chip and jack it into your brain, and then she ha- kind of talks about how oh, like you know, she's like inside your suit. Um, and, don't get any funny ideas yeah yeah <laughs> exactly um i like too how keys hands you his pistol he says he doesn't keep it loaded but there are bullets inside <laughs> um yeah when you walk out mm-hmm. yeah you immediately have and you immediately do that amazing you know cocking your gun mo- um animation i love that animation and then you're introduced to the best weapon in all of halo <laughs> pretty, yeah you, me- you immediately just start with the best weapon in the game yeah <laughs> um, which is an excellent introduction. Which is an excellent introduction. And it sounds like, uh, or from what I remember, like they tweaked that. They were tweaking that gun and they overpowered it kind of on accident, but kind of on purpose, right? Do you guys remember that? Have you heard of that history at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think there was some vid doc somewhere they were talking about it. Mm-hmm. Somebody, I can't remember who. So a bunch it was, of was like un- way underpowered, I think, when they were testing it and they dialed it up a little bit right before release and just threw <laughs> and just printed the game. It yeah, it was like super last minute, so mm-hmm. they didn't really get a chance to really test how powerful it was, and then it was too late. Yep, because it was beautiful. But uh, I'm well. At the same time, the pistol's such an icon of Halo One now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Like everyone sees it, and they're like, "Oh, I gotta get the Halo One pistol. That's yep. what I need." Yeah. Especially in like Halo Five now has the Halo One pistol in it, so you can find but it, I've and it works still exactly never the it, same. Actually. I've never gotten it. Some I... of the big team maps have it. Yeah, does it? I must try. Yeah, make it. It effort. works. It looks. It one. It looks exactly like the pistol. It sounds exactly like the pistol, and you get the same headshot rate as the original pistol. They did a really good job at putting that into the game. The um, I forgot how big the reticles were in this game too. Like when oh, you yeah. finally pick up the yeah. AR, like that reticle is giant. It's like how do I get a headshot with this giant reticle? It just takes up the entire screen. It's just like yeah. oh, the reticle's the size of the person's body. It's just like oh man, I don't know. I'm not sure this is gonna hit. <laughs> Um, and that was more of a sign, I think, of the games at the time. There weren't a whole lot of first-person shooters at the time, so they're still especially on that console. Out. Yeah. Whereas now we essentially just have a pixel that's the center. You know, that's our reticle. But so, just an important thing to note when we kind of started this game: this is one of the first first-person games that restricted the amount of weapons you could hold. Uh-huh. So, like, I remember that being a huge deal. That hey, like, people were really negative on this game about that point specifically. Hmm. Because you're playing games like Counter Strike or like Half Life, and you had like a weapon. You could just wheel, hold all like the games, and you hold everything. And right? you know, but this game gave you, yeah, like Doom, like all those games. You just push the keyboard number, as many numbers as you had. You had weapons, like, and this one, like, no, you restricted to two. So you, from like the from day one, you had to be really tactical and think about the weapons you had, yeah. their pluses and their negatives, yep. and how weapon pairings were important. So um. Mm-hmm. Well, and also like it gives you the experience kind of, of being, you know, you're out of ammo. You have to pick up a new weapon right. and try yes. out a new weapon. Yeah. Right. Or else yeah. I would, I, f- I feel like if they didn't do that, no one would have used the alien weapons as much because the exactly. UNSC weapons are so familiar. And so much more fun, I think, using and in generally, I think that's my, my own personal uh, opinion. I prefer human weapons over Covenant. There's a few rare cases, but uh, for the most part, I'm always trying to use a uh, UNSC weapon. Yeah, there's and like they, one or two Covenant weapons. Like the carbine's really good and the beam rifle's really good. I'll always pick those yeah. up. But mm-hmm. other than that, and those aren't even in this game, so. Yeah. Oh, the, I thought the carbine is, isn't it? I guess we'll. No. Or, no. We'll the fuel know. rod is in this game, but I don't think it. you can pick it up in the game. You campaign. can't pick it up in this game, though. Man, I love that carbine. Can't wait to use that again. Um, <laughs> me, we got a couple missions. We got a couple about episodes to, uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Jumping ahead of the curve. So let's before we start talking about shooting aliens, let's just talk about Chief a little bit. I guess um, it, it's fun to see old animated Chief, Chunky Chief. 
Um, Chunky Chief. And he's yeah, what? Is, so is this Mark? What what armor is this? Mark four. Armor? Four. Mark four. Yeah. Okay. So he starts with Mark four, and that's kind of a thing. If you dive into the to the lore over time, it's kind of a it's a fun thing to discuss um, with the the lore the lore heads of Halo. Um, well, they had I'm to, always they had to, to get really talk to this. about it. They had to talk about the difference between Halo One and Halo Two, though, because it's very dramatic. It's not as because yeah, like the I other think... the other iterations aren't as dramatic. Like Halo Three to Four isn't as dramatic. Mm-hmm. But I think at the time, some of the, that reasoning is just like them trying to really get around the fact of the power between Xbox One and Xbox. Or mm-hmm. where no, sorry, Halo Two is an Xbox OG game as well. Sorry, yeah. just the differences in what they could do over yeah. the two kind of generations. So it's like, yeah, he looks different simply because we're better at making the game than we were before as opposed to like, yeah. oh, he's in a new market right now. They did totally just throw that out there and then that obviously spawned all the debates that there is now t- to today over armor variants in Halo. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, it just it like, gets really confused. Right. Like, don't even go down that rabbit hole <laughs> unless it's really interests you. Just don't even worry about yeah. it. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't really. Yeah. But uh, I do love the original design, Mark IV design. I do like it. Well, I've, the, al- I've always been trying to get back to that. The other thing to I note can. is that they did remaster, or yeah, they remastered Halo Two, and the jump from Halo original CE remaster to the Halo Two remaster is huge in terms of fidelity. Oh and graphics. yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. a giant leap. So, so the remastered um, Halo Two remastered armor looks amazing uh, oh, compared yeah. to what we're seeing here, and even and even this armor looks way better than when they originally built it in twenty uh, two thousand one. Um, anything we should talk about just chief in general like you know do we give his backstory here like okay he was a he was a kid that was like a kid soldier brought up through this the um that's explained a little more in halo 4 so we could talk about that a little more in halo 4 because yeah. right now it's not very relevant yeah. it gets really relevant as the games go on yeah though. so we can just go where he's a super soldier yeah. if you want to look into more stuff you go for it um, i mean at the time when this game was made there wasn't a whole lot of stories around mm-hmm. who you were in first person shooters so like he is just super soldier man he's, john he's kind of like an analog you know, to a doom guy you know he's just the guy you're playing yeah as, right Exactly. Um, and he's essentially invincible. Now, I found him fascinating from the perspective of his dialogue with Cortana. And just as few as it is there, but I did like how they interacted with each other. I liked how other people looked at John and Spartan. I mean, in those rare mm-hmm. occasions when you when, when you get that interaction, it's fun. We'll talk about them as they come up. Yeah. But um, I There's guess, a like, great one in Halo 3. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people... I mean, it's, it's interesting to see, yeah, in Halo 3, people are like, oh my God, Spartan. But like... Everyone on the Pillar of Autumn is totally cool with John. There's no, like, starstruck there at all. Mm-hmm. Everybody just sees him as a, as a soldier, which I think is really Well, they also came from Reach, where the Spartans were born, so there were a lot more Spartans true. walking around on mm-hmm. Reach. Very true. But even at this stage, the Spartans are still super secret, you know? And, and so also, I, I Master Chief kind of isn't the only Spartan on the Pillar of Autumn. <gasps> oh, <laughs> shit. God, we're giving people mm-hmm. so many threads to go chase down. I know. Yeah. So for regardless, hey, Master Chief, the the guy in the green suit, he's your protagonist for the duration. Um, we do flip out and play as you know ODST. You you play as somebody that's not Master Chief, but for the most part, we'll be playing as Master Chief from here on forward. Um, he's the guy with the green armor and the guns. Um, so did you guys? Did you guys <laughs> didn't pick up any? Um, any of the Covenant weapons on your legendary playthrough? Or I figure you had oh, to. Oh, I did. Right? You have to. Yeah, you have to. A right? legendary, you really have yeah, to. Yeah. I was able to make I it didn't. through. Every- <laughs> I That's made it through because you had me there. I know <laughs> you were doing all of the uh, pistol, the plasma pistols, and I was doing all yeah. the pistol pistols. Were you guys calling out like I got this guy? Or are you, I guess no. you just have to do with elites, or you just kind of notice? Um, we wouldn't really call it out, but I would call out when I knock out a shield, and be like his shield is down. Okay. Crystal would headshot him, and we move on. Gotcha. You know, that kind of stuff. Not crazy. We weren't being sued. Su- yeah, we were mostly just talking about gushing about how much we love yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That> <laughs> Not was really like, paying we attention like, oh, to the God. game we're playing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I love murdering fun. these aliens. It's so good. Oh uh, man, it is. It's totally, totally is. Do you guys stream it? Did you, have you done that? Yet? Oh, no, no, we, we might. Talk, we might stream yeah. it. That'd be fun times. We still got to stream Reach, Krista. We do. We'll have to set up a time for that. Yes, yes we do. The other thing I noticed was the floaty jump. It felt way floatier than... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. It's Super great. floaty. Um, not that you jump a lot in this mission, um, but uh, you know, right when I got into to Chief's armor, you know, I started jumping around like, whoa, <laughs> where'd the gravity go? I can go? fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the majority of this mission is just really... 
you know, we'll probably kind of talk about some of the things that we noticed, but you're just kind of battling your way through the ship. Um, and there's like, which some I have side... to say, I've never been a fan of the ship, of this mission design. Like oh, from it's like, so if confusing. it's the first time playing this, it is a bit confusing yeah. knowing, trying to figure out where to go. And then um, when you're in the tunnels and stuff like that, and in the small kind mm-hmm. of like maintenance hatchways, that's awfully confusing, even still now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've played this mission over this game for so many years. You can still be very easily turned around. So well, it's interesting because I mean, part of I think part of that is because the aliens aren't necessarily fighting you; they're fighting the Marines, and you're like stumbling across the uh, encounters. Um, so so from that, you're just kind of like, okay, where is the shooting happening? I got to go towards the shooting. <laughs> and if you get turned around or go back and pick up a health pack or something like that, then you, it's easy to get lost. And there's a lot of those corridors too that are dark. Um, they make you use your um, your flashlight quite a bit here and yeah definitely easy to get turned around um so did you guys see is it just ar and pistol in this from a unsc weapon standpoint yes yep okay so it's just kind of getting you used to the weapons you have and then available. there's the plasma pistol and the plasma rifle yeah that's it yeah i don't and think there are any needlers no not in this mission um and pretty there much there weren't any jackals either were there no, they get introduced in the next mission. Yeah, it's just okay. all you know, all grunts, and you kind of. It's interesting because you do get a little personality of the game in this mission. You know, with the Johnson speech, that's kind of like, okay, this is, um, it's not a super serious. It, it's it's serious, but it's it's also got kind of that the comedic relief to it. You know, with, it has its own sense of humor. sense of humor. Yeah, um, Cortana's kind of got sassy, um, sassy attitude. There's Johnson there, just kind of you know barking at people. Um, and then the grunts are super goofy, and it, yeah. it's kind, oh, of, yeah. kind of weird because you have these these elites that uh, this wart 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 um, these elites ah! yeah exactly yeah, they... that that are kind of feel big and feel important and feel um, intimidating, and then you got these little grunts that are that are screaming and yelling all over the place. Um, it's just it's just a weird experience to dive in if you hadn't played this before. What um so as you're as we're progressing, I think it was one of the sticking points for me was especially on legendaries when you finally get up to that stair area. Um that oh, yeah. tends to be a little and bit And the guys are above you yeah, in the landing. That tends yeah, that, to be a hard part on legendary. Tough. Did you guys it make does. it through that okay playing co op? No, we died a lot. Did you okay? We were messing around. Yeah. Right. We didn't die a lot. <laughs> but uh <laughs> legendary does uh populate the map with a lot more elites and especially the red elites. Mm-hmm. So so are we going to go, yeah. I guess, moving forward, we, do you guys want to call them by their colors or, like, by, don't they have, like, actual, like, the blue elite is a, I'm forgetting. Minor. Minor. minor ma- is a major for the blues? Should we do that or should or we just go blue and red? Major for reds, I think. But, like, and, I mean. And then, minor like, commander blue. for the. Yeah. Uh, honestly, we could just call them like we called them back in 2001. <laughs> blue. Blue elites. <laughs> red elites. Gold elites and sword guys. And the sword guys. Sword guys, right. yeah, totally. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you, you you will see, you know, kind of a differentiation of colors, and that essentially means how how hard they are, how, what's their health bar at. Um, and shield strength. Yeah, shield strength. Yeah, too. definitely shield strength. There was the one point too, I guess, before we got to those stairs, is where you kind of you're, you're killing a couple of grunts right away, and I think maybe a, an elite or two, and then I think it's the airlock that they talk about. And that airlock blows up, and then all of a sudden, a, a ton of grunts and a couple of elites pour I out. I thought that was super cool. Mm-hmm. The way that they, they call out the fact that they're using our life pod evacuation airlocks to, to come in and like mm-hmm. use their breach craft to get in. Because in other games, we'll see that they have breaching craft for uh, like the do specific. The ticks or whatever they're the called. The ticks, or I can't remember what they're called. They have something like that. That come in and like burn their way through the hull. But I want to think that the specific design of this of the Pillar of Autumn, which is like it's got in in the lore, it's got like a honeycomb kind of class. I remember they were named for like how they built this up, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously it's why this Pillar of Autumn can take so many hits and why it's such like a brutal kind of ship mm-hmm. uh, for its size in terms of being able to withstand the damage. So I like to think that like the ships, the breaching craft, probably couldn't get in. Or at least couldn't push oh, deep sure. enough in to get into into side the shoulder. They have to come in through the the airlocks, which I think are clever. And Cortana kind of oh, clever bastards. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> that's how they that's how they manage it. So that was cool. And um, 
if it's your first time playing just go into those little docks and get yourself a nice overshield which i think was cool and oh, very yeah. useful on legendary right. mm-hmm. um and it's kind of like I, probably, I think i mentioned this before but like the first time playing through you don't pick up on up on a lot of this stuff um the second or third time you finally pick up on kind of what the dialogue is and at least for me that's how i play then you're like kind of listening to what they're saying a little bit more versus just you know ah, i gotta shoot all these guys um you you're they, they are explaining what's going on along the way which is something that halo does really well well especially your first playthrough on this level it's basically just confusion and panic mm-hmm. you're like yeah, i don't know is. where i am there are these alien guys that i i don't know how to do anything which is probably pretty good considering what is happening that you like you know your ship is being boarded is being blown up it's panic get off the ship do you know what i mean right. you gotta run 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 yeah so it has does have that good pacing to it i suppose and if you're playing which also makes the next the beginning of next level a very like wow just how it yeah. how it opens up yeah. but that's ahead of her a little ahead that's of true herself. yeah yeah this feels very closed um obviously it's very claustrophobic mm-hmm. this whole level right um, the other thing to mention, do you guys remember if you could play co-op on the original release? Oh, yeah. Okay, you could. Uh, um, the, the, just talking about, you know, picking up on the, the dialogue and what's going on is if you're usually if you're playing co-op, I know it's, it's when I'm playing co-op, harder. I'm not listening yeah, to yeah. anything that's going on in the story. Um, it's not until you actually have Subtitles. played it once or twice and are playing it by yourself. Um, that's when you're actually kind of soaking the stuff in. Um, but it's all it is all there for you and that's kind of why we're here today and why this halo universe is so large is because bungie started this um this franchise with including a a ton of stuff along the way a lot of rabbit holes to go down a lot of a lot of lore to soak in um so yeah i mean we just kind of fight our way through this area we've kind of talked about a lot of that that stuff already you get to a point where you find the escape pods and the escape pods are gone because they're locked off and then we finally get up to um, the the final escape pod, and there's a red elite, and I think a, a little bit more resistance there. Once you take that down, um, then we get our, our final cutscene. So then we grab one of the marines, huck him into the pod <laughs> with us. Um, that also really illustrates like this marine is he's pretty well armored, and Master Chief just with one hand just like picks him up by the scruff of his neck and just throws him in, mm-hmm. or by his collar, just like toss like it's nothing. I do like to think that that red elite was one of the elites that killed our engineers right away. So that was like our, our revenge there our revenge. at the very end. Um, let's see here. So cutscene, do you want to talk about cutscene or anything else in this in the mission? Like any trivia fun stuff that we glazed well, over? Well, the cutscene, like the end cutscene where you see the pod like slowly going down onto the halo. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my god. It's so good. Yeah. It just... Also, with the new graphics, it looks really, really good. It looks good. Yeah, it's still a good looking game. It is really. Yep, still a good looking and, game, and it still controls really well. I mean, again, we talked about like the reticle. Like first person shooters have advanced since then, obviously, but it still but feels like a, a competent shooter. Oh, it's totally playable. Mm-hmm. Like it is still totally playable, even with the vast differences in like almost eighteen years now since the original was released. Like it's solid like you know what i mean it still holds up to this day as being distinctly halo mm-hmm. do you know what i mean it's still you can you can go from halo 5 to halo ce and still enjoy it like yeah it's very different there are some control and like do you know what i mean gameplay things that can be difficult but um master chief collection does a great job i think of easing you in and switching between mm-hmm. those games and kind of harmonizing the controls um i loved loved cea when it first came out Oh, it was so, I played the shit out of it. Like, yeah, like the original, how important it was to me was ridiculous. But like when CA was coming out, I don't think I've been ever as hyped for Halo. Like the remake, like 10 years, it's coming out like exactly on the date. It's got like all these updated graphics. You can flick back and forward. It's got achievements. Mm-hmm. I was totally pumped for achievements. <laughs> um, I have all of them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've done it both on both Master Chief Collection and this one. It's just so much fun. I I'm still all. missing um, that one, David, that you at the promised very end. me. Yeah, yes. I know. We will. We will. You promised me it. I will. Um, <laughs> did it, didn't it, did um, it have multiplayer too or not on the anniversary? It, yeah. Uh, the anniversary did it, have multiplayer, like co-op wise, but was, it also, it had the reach. There was a map pack for reach. Oh, that's right. Essentially. They were sending yeah, people so to it didn't have its own. Okay. But they also oh, had like a there was an installation zero four like the from the second mission there was a firefight map there, so it was a really yeah cool which I talked map. about in our last uh, episode, uh, one of the episodes back because I got to play for the first time 
with uh, with Nick, and that was that's that right. was awesome. Because mm-hmm. uh, I didn't know it was there, and but it's really good. That firefight map is really cool. I'd love to play it again. So, There's a hidden guilty spark on that firefight map. Of course there is. <laughs> Why wouldn't there be? Of course. The other thing, actually, it's a good transition to the terminal. But before we get to guilty spark, um, I just wanted to mention how you know, you, Krista, you talked about the pod, you know, dropping into the halo, and that's kind of a cool moment. When you're realizing, hey, I'm going down there which is pretty cool. And then you also see the Pillar of Autumn and how and how rough shape that thing's in. And um, Cortana mentions, you know, at the very beginning of the mission is, you know, use my subroutines to land the ship. And Keys is like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then she, here at the end, she's saying, oh, it looks like he's taking it down manually. And it's just on <laughs> fire. It is not doing well. And then it actually accelerates past your pod. So, um, yeah, you, you know that that, that thing is uh, going to be in a rough shape. Uh, on on Halo, um, and then the other thing is like Chief is as cool as a cucumber. You know, it's like all this chaos is going on. Cortana's being super sassy. Chief is like, "We'll be fine." <laughs> um, and he's right. Also, he everyone's will be fine. strapped in. <laughs> everyone's strapped in. Like scared. He's just standing there. He's like, yep. eh, "Well, it'll be fine." <laughs> eh. uh, we also see Fohammer, which I Fohammer will be throughout this game a little bit but that's that's our first experience with full hammer she's she's flying the slightly drop incorrect con- s- slight slightly incorrect oh no it is incorrect no that's not that's not for oh, not? She, not dies. she dies she dies upon impact well, wait a minute it, everybody in that pod dies oh it's the same voice actor it's the though. same voice actor okay yeah, because it sounds like the full hammer. Okay, gotcha. It's the same voice, and I think That's character model, like the pilot has the, the same generic All right. character model in this All game. Right. But, um, yeah. Okay, everybody in the pod, right? you're right. Okay, so as we find out here shortly in the next episode, um, spoilers. spoilers. But um, yeah, so th- that's where I got confused. They don't specifically say full hammer, but I just assumed it was because the voice, and I love that voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this terminal, um, and then we'll talk about some community feedback, and we'll get out of here. Awesome. So, uh, if you do not know, the terminal is located on the bridge of the Pillar of Autumn. Uh, one of the screens is flashing red and saying incoming message. And, of course, the person manning the computers just completely ignores it. Completely ignores the <laughs> incoming message from the strange object that they are approaching. And terminals but, um, are a new entry to the anniversary version, right? The original didn't have Yes, it. they are. Yeah. So terminals, uh, and, you know, they kind of popped up, I think, in, was it in Halo 2 or Halo 3 is when they first popped up? Halo um, 3 started yeah. terminals, but they were text-only terminals. That's right. And so it's just another way for the team to kind of give you some more interesting lore and confuse you more, really, <laughs> in Halo yeah. 3. Halo 3s are real yeah. confusing. Um, but this well, one... Well, it makes more sense now that the lore's progressed, yes. but during it, you're like, I have no idea who these people mm-hmm. are, what is going on. Yep, exactly. So it, it, it's a fun thing that you'll be find throughout the games. It's like a little cool, and in this case, it's going to be a cutscene um, with some with some fun fun stuff. Yeah, the CEA terminals are amazing. They are. They have really good visuals, too. It's just really, really interesting. <laughs> But um, these terminals, specifically through the entire game, kind of tell us more about Guilty Spark, 343 Guilty Spark, the monitor of the installation. Uh, this terminal gives you, I mean, he he sees all these ships approaching. He's like, yo, you should get out of here. And then he's like, wait a second, this is humanity. And so he starts um, starts uh, looking in, he hacks the, he basically hacks the computer in the Pillar of Autumn, starts looking through human, humanity's um, records and then openly welcomes them to the ring instead mm-hmm. of destroying them. He's like, at first he's like, no, 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 you get to, gotta, get to, gotta get away. And he's like, wait a second, these are reclaimers. Mm-hmm. So um, the big thing about Guilty Spark is that he he was built in the time of the Forerunners and hasn't really gotten past that. So he's not up to modern times. So he uses a lot of uh, Forerunner lingo. Like one of the first thing he, things he says is Ecumen Council. Which mm-hmm. is the forerunner hierarchy? It's kind of the yeah. government. Um, and also, he mentions Geos at the end of this, mm-hmm. or Geos, Ge- Ge- which Geosh, is. Yeah, I think. So one of the last things he says, and David and I were talking about this. Uh, he says, uh, "I must verify the presence and pitch of your Geos before allowing full access." Oh wow! They dropped that in there. Dang. 
Yeah, which I never copped the first time round, and well, I only copped this time round. Well, like, also, wow. the Forerunner books were just coming out during this period. This is 2011. So this is this is their um, hype up to Halo 4 and more Forerunner presence. So we didn't mm-hmm. know any of this lingo. So a lot of these cutscenes, when we first watched them, just so many things flew over our heads. Right. But um, the really interesting thing about a Gayosh, if you haven't, if you haven't um, read the Forerunner trilogy, highly recommend. But it is basically the presence of an ancient being in your head. So like, <laughs> it, it I mean, like, funny, but yeah, it's what it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's something the Forerunners did to preserve um, to preserve culture and civilization and history. Uh, and some of the lesser species, especially humans, they put memories of ancient humans in their mind so that they could learn from them and they could talk to them. And in some cases, it was almost like a multiple personality syndrome in these uh, beings that had really powerful gayoshes. They would go between like talking as the gayosh or talking as themselves, or they'd just have a conversation with themselves. So this is a really interesting little mm-hmm. tidbit, especially since... Uh, I mean, Guilty Spark would know about the Gayoshes, but it's interesting that that's one of the first things he wants to find out is who are these people harboring within themselves or what memories are they harboring? It's just interesting that um, Bungie, well, I guess this is 343, but I guess Halo in general, like they don't shy away from just cramming a ton of information <laughs> into you know certain story beats. And you, you, it takes like a third or fourth playthrough or coming back to it after years to finally really fully understand what's going on. Um, unless you're Chris Aiken, which I don't know how he does it, but um, yeah, it's, it's just it's it makes it makes the replays that much more worth it because you you know it's like watching a, a comedy the second or third time or you know a suspense movie or whatever it is. It's like oh you you pick up on new things every time. Yeah, it is, especially with, I mean, there's just so much lore in Halo now. There's like a million books. And each books add a little more piece to the puzzle. You mm-hmm. learn like one new word, maybe, mm-hmm. and then you start understanding it. And you go back and you're like, "Wait, this word that they were talking about is now all over the Halo universe. What the mm-hmm. heck?" So, um, the the terminals do add a lot more tidbits, and they also build up to the Forerunner trilogy of books and Halo Four, where we start really getting into Forerunners. Mm-hmm. So, this is a plus good one. Love it. Absolutely. Guilty spark. <laughs> <laughs> we get a gush also over. important oh. to note for these terminals that you need to have the Halo channel installed. Because there's a Halo channel integration, which I was oh, not a fan of. Yeah. No, I don't think anyone and was. And that's since so, kind of died. It still exists, so it was able to, to work. It still exists. Okay. Yeah, it still I works. I guess they have to have it exist because right. it's But it tabs you game. out of the game to watch yeah. the terminals instead yeah. of like in the original Halo CEA on the 360. It just showed you the video mm-hmm. in the um, in the game. So Yeah, Halo channel was an awesome idea, and and I was excited for it. It was, it was fun to poke around right away, but then I just it, it kind of lost Same. legs over time. It did. There was yeah. nothing really to do on the channel. Mm-hmm. There wasn't and as they, much news. They should have just done a Halo Waypoint app. Yeah. Just straight onto the Xbox One. If they made mm-hmm. it a Halo Waypoint app, everybody would be happy. Yeah. It was ambitious. I, I, I'm glad they tried it, but just um, didn't didn't pan out. Um, so let's talk about some community stuff, and then let's let's close this episode. Let's talk about. Um, so essentially, we'll be um, at the top of the show. I mentioned if you want to send us your thoughts, feel free. We'd love to read them on the show. We drop. Um, we have a Facebook group um, that we drop some questions on, and then we have a Twitter handle that we usually will, you know, as the le- in the lead up of recording a, an episode, we'll ask some questions, give you a chance to, to send us some thoughts. So let's start with uh, some Facebook, um, and then f- flip over to some Twitter. Yeah, so Krista did ask a question this time around of, you know, what's the story with your Halo? Where were you? What were you doing? What was happening in your life? So, there's a lot of a lot of guys kind of got back on this. It was great. So we got some Nick Tremman over here saying that when Halo PC came out, it was his first Halo experience. It was a follow each book. He didn't have an Xbox, so the first time he played the game was on PC, which I think is kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You are not a real Halo fan. You didn't get an Xbox <laughs> One. Or no, Xbox but he's, he has one now. He's okay now. Um... That's pretty crazy. I mean, Scott, uh, James M. Scott, sorry, says Summer 02, playing in a friend's house. Um, he's playing like, hey, what's this game? And become the most beloved nerd genres of his life. That's pretty, it's pretty mm-hmm. similar to my first intro. Um, Brian the Wolf, awesome name. 
Uh, worked at Blockbuster. He took a late shift <laughs> and a new Xbox and a copy of Halo C Home. Check it out. He didn't sleep that night. <laughs> That's uh, fair enough. Yeah, of course. Especially when you get to the flood. Mm. Matthew Lunt replied with the smallest response I've ever seen Matthew post in Facebook. Um, <laughs> so I appreciate that, Matt. Thanks very much. Uh, he got it for Christmas 2003. His parents got wow. him an Xbox for Halo CE and other games he doesn't remember because those are not important games, Matt. That's why. When did Halo 2 come out? 2004? Halo 2? Four, yeah. yeah, 4. Mm, yep. okay. 2004, yeah, maybe. So he got it a year before the next installation. Mm-hmm. I think I got it late too. I've told the story many times. Um, but I've, my friend of mine, my friend's cousin had a Halo, had an Xbox and Halo C and brought it over to like a sleepover one night and like, there was like 10 people crammed in his room passing these two gigantic controllers between oh, themselves. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, and trying to figure out this game together was, was an incredible experience and I think it was maybe the year later, the summer after where I got a job and worked and hired and got myself an Xbox with say Halo C just with, for the goal of getting Halo in my life. Interesting um, thing about the Dookie is that they now have one that you can buy for Xbox oh, yeah. One. That's right. They bring it that back. actually has a screen on it that boots up with the sound and the anima- uh, the animation that the Halo original Xbox did. Sorry. Oh, it's amazing. Which is so cool. It's so such a cool thing. But also, I don't want that. It, it's expensive, I think. And it's I like $70. Really yeah, I don't really need that in my life right now. Um, Matt also says this is not one of his favorite Halo games. So, you know, he's wrong. So, you know, <laughs> I'm ignoring the rest of his comments. So H- Halo 2 is my favorite personally, but, you know. He, he's right. You should you shut your dirty mouth, bro. <laughs> uh, River Willingham said it was early fall 2009. His super latecomer. His best friend brought a couple of 360 games from Sleepover. What happened to be this game? He talks about it a lot. Halo 3. Had a 1v1 match on Sand Trap and absolutely destroyed me. And then asked my dad to get me Halo 3 for my birthday. He hadn't looked back since. That's crazy, River. That's crazy. Halo 3. But I suppose I'm old. So, like, it's easy for me to look back and say, like, you know, oh, everyone started with Halo 1. But no. Probably people from all age ranges, I, all places, so had different introductions. I'll inject my story here. Um, so, I was in college when Halo 1 came out. Um, <laughs> and I remember the uh, my buddies. I was actually in fraternity house. And my buddies, like, had hooked up a LAN party. And they invited oh, yeah. me to come up and play. And I was like, that game looks fucking stupid. <laughs> so I didn't play I didn't out. play Halo. I didn't play Halo 1. Heretic. I didn't play Halo 2 when they came Heretic. out. But I did finally break down when Halo 3 came out um, with 360. I saw how, how um, you know great reviews it had gotten. Um, and finally broke down. I, I think I would switched from PlayStation over to Xbox 360 at the time. Um, got got Halo and then finally kind of well and I didn't really even get into it from there I just played it and then put it down and then I didn't get into Halo like big time until right before 4 came out so I'm kind of a late comer to the, Dude, that's the crazy. universe yeah so I remember Halo coming out originally I just didn't play it god damn all these heretics <laughs> Krista what are we going to do I don't know we're going to have to excommunicate all of them I don't think so um, so is that it on Facebook then we go to Twitter yeah, get on the tweets. Okay, so on Twitter we have uh, Unicracken, so one of our favorite people. Uh, Christmas morning 2001, it was uh, always very magical. Uh, we were poor, so we only had a few games, so I played Halo so much. And uh, I was crazy about it long before I knew that there was anything else going on in the series, like books and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was the same. Uh, Ryan Snyder said, so excited to throw back to 16 years ago. Uh, the game changed my life. First time I played it, I was across the street from the house I was born in. Love this game. <laughs> uh, Matthew uh, Bronozoe. Or Br- Nailed it. <laughs> keep going, Chris. Just, just, fight. just keep going. Uh, I was at my friend's and we played Assault on the Control Room trying to save oh, yes. every Marine because he was convinced that it, it, they would... Ass- they would assist in an epic final battle if you did. That's good. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, once we're Spartans, said Australia, Sydney, 2002. So uh, that's all we have for Twitter. So now we can talk about me. Yeah, what about you? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, guys. This is going to really make you guys sad. Uh, so I was six when the game came out. <laughs> that's disgusting. That's awesome. <laughs> So um, the uh, 
I, I hung out with a, a lot with uh, a couple of guys that were boys, I guess, at the time, childhood friends that lived across the street from my house. They had an Xbox, they had Halo, and we would just go over there and we wouldn't actually play the game because we were like six and seven. Mm-hmm. So we would just literally like go to the second level in the game, Halo. We would just run around and just do random shit, shoot stuff, try to get on like the bridges and play in the waterfalls and stuff like that. So we didn't actually really play the game. We would play the game once in a while and actually play through everything. But most of the time it was just dicking around as kids. And then once I got older, a couple, couple, just a couple, couple years year. later. A couple years. Yeah. <laughs> a couple. Uh, it was probably when I was like 13, 12 or 13 is when I finally got an Xbox. And I was able to go back and actually play all of the games. And then I was like, oh, there are books. So I read all the books. And uh, just really got back into it. So I had a couple years where I wasn't actually playing Halo, but I would always go over to the friend's house because they got Halo 2 as well. Mm-hmm. So we played a little bit of Halo 2. But that's cool because so, I think you you kind of grew up with Halo, right? Because you were kind yeah, of right at the beginning. Like when I was that kind of that age, I was playing like Mario and Zelda and stuff like that. So, you know, I have kind of that nostalgia for, for that sort of stuff. Whereas the Halo, the Halo time is kind of that same thing for you, which is cool, I think. Yeah, it was my first video game. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it was my first video game. Uh, my parents, my parents weren't really into video games. They didn't like it. They thought it was addictive, stuff like that. So as a child, I didn't have any of my own systems. So I went over to my friend's house and played Halo. Yeah, so Halo was my first video game, and now I have all the video games to compensate. <laughs> ah, stupid Thanks, parents. mom and dad. <laughs> right. You showed them, Krista. I did. Now I'm making halo podcasts and they're like oh maybe video games are a good thing i'm like eh, yeah showed you <laughs> uh that's very well, that's actually kind of ties and i mentioned frankie given his um acceptance speech into the hall of fame is he mentions that like hey you know there actually is a future in video games for those parents that are worried about their kids playing games at a young age um it is a, it is a thing that people can do for their career um or and you know it, it's a it's a lifetime hobby anyway all right. Anything else we missed? On? Anything else we want to cover? I think we got about everything. Good introduction to the game. This was an extra yeah. long episode yeah. because of all the gushing. We just have Lots to give this game oh, so much so love. Good. This will be a, just, a gushing, se- just a gushing series in general, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, it is. Um, but especially think... with the very first mission of the very yeah. first game. Yeah. It's just so monumental. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, well that will do it for our debriefing of Pillar of Autumn from Halo Combat Evolved. On the next episode, we'll be covering the aptly named Halo mission. Uh, <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Halo from Halo. Halo from Halo. Uh, <laughs> send us your thoughts at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved. We'll see you next episode. Evolved. 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 Uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Thank you.